Good news, the B Rotor F3 flight controller finally came in for the Step 1 plane. So here it is in the package right here. Now I've already opened it, so to make things quick. It came from RC Timer, it took about a month to get here. Of course RC Timer's website was down for a couple of weeks while they totally revamped the website. So here it is right here in the package, and I'll take it out and show you what it looks like. So here's what was in the package, and it has uh, several leads here. This, to me, is the most interesting one right here, because the B Rotor actually has a Minim OSD chipset on it, so it has its own built-in OSD, and this is how you access the OSD to program it. So here is your typical Minim OSD that came from Hobby King, and you'll see that Minim OSD is almost as big and heavy as the B-Rotor flight controller. But the Minim OSD chipset is actually on the B-Rotor flight controller. If you turn it over, you can see right here, if you look closely, there's the same chip here. It's an Atmel that's also on the B-Rotor. And then you have your video chip, which is down here, so that those components are actually on the B-Rotor already. So I don't need the Minim OSD. The way we usually access the Minim OSD to program it is I have a little FTDI to USB board right here that I got from SparkFun and it just plugs right on those pins right there like that and then the USB comes off to the computer to program it. Well in order to do that with the B rotor they've provided this little cable so that this little cable plugs on here and I may have it on there wrong I don't know which way it goes right now but but it just plugs right on there like that in the same manner so that you can program the Minim OSD on the back of the B rotor right here. Now the B rotor has a companion uh, power distribution board that you can also buy from RC Timer and the power distribution board is the same size as the B rotor and you can stack them. Uh, I opted not to get the power distribution board because I want to keep the weight down on my plane. After all, it's going to be under 250 grams, so I don't want extra weight. So I didn't get the power distribution board. And another reason is the power distribution board has actually four outputs for four motors. And I only have one motor on my plane, so I don't need all that capability. What I do need is the current sensor and the voltage sensor that's on that power distribution board. So to take care of that, I'm going to use one of these, which is actually made for a plane. You can use it on a quad too, but this is actually a, a power board here that uh, I can use for uh, to get the same current and voltage reading off here, and also to supply 5 volts, because this has a 5 volt regulator. But it's kind of heavy as it is, so what I'm going to do is desolder these big chunky XT60 connectors off there and then I'll just solder my little ESC and battery connector on here and just use this little block which is pretty small and much lighter than the PCB. So the power module with current sensor just plugs right onto this connector on the B rotor like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder or desolder the XT60 leads here to save weight and uh, before doing that you might notice it's got plus in just remember that because that's where the battery lead has to go the red wire has to go on there and then of course this red wire for the output goes on the top just across from that and then you got your two black wires on the back so that's something to remember before you desolder it where to find out how to put the wires back on for the battery and the ESC. So the battery will solder over here, battery lead, and the ESC will go over here. Okay, I'm going to do some weighing here. Now I don't need to weigh this because that's only used when I program the uh, OSD on the board. We may need a couple of cables, I don't know, but I'll throw them on there. And uh, so we got 1.6 grams there and we may need these although I doubt I'll need that many because I'm just going to use PPM and then we got the B rotor itself 
and the power module, which I just desoldered the XD60 connectors off. Put that on there. And we'll probably need some kind of power cable. I probably won't be this long. I'm going to shorten this one, but this is the power cable. So we got around 17 grams is what we got. And I've got 30 grams to play with. The plane's only like uh, 219 grams right now, so it's it should be easy to keep it under 250 grams. Looking good so far. Now another feature about the B rotor that I like is it has actually has a barometer. I don't know if you can see it, but it's this little metal can with a hole in it. That's a barometer. So it can give me an altitude reading, which is nice. And of course it has accelerometers. It can tell uh, pitch and roll and all that. And uh, and gyros so you can basically get everything you need on your display like artificial horizon you can get the uh, altitude and voltage and current which is nice if I just had those things that would be good enough for me but this also has a connector where you can plug on a GPS compass module and that probably will be coming in the future if I can get a lightweight GPS compass module I can also do return to home and I'll know my location and uh, that'll be handy too. So this has a lot of features all packed in one little board. This arrow here shows you which way you should orientate it. Although I'm thinking I may be able to orientate it any way I want using clean flight and just set the position of the board in clean flight. So this can be loaded with clean flight or base flight from what I hear. It's basically a NAS32 derivative and uh, it uses the same software as NAS32. So we want to test it by plugging it into the USB port on my laptop and then seeing if the COM port comes up in Device Manager. So I've got Device Manager up right now waiting. Alright, let's just go ahead and plug in the mini USB cable. Right there. Just be gentle with it. Don't want to break it off. Okay, and now we'll plug it in the uh, laptop and see if we get any lights. Okay, so there's some lights blinking right there, so that's a good sign. If you don't get any lights, the thing's probably dead or needs the bootloader or something. But it's blinking right now. Now up here on the device manager, we can see that under COM ports, uh, Silicon Lab CP210X USB to UART bridge is up on COM port 6. Now it doesn't have to be on COM port 6, it varies from computer to computer. But when you get into clean flight, you will need to go to whatever COM port comes up right here in Device Manager. So COM port 6 is what I'm going to be using. Uh, next stage would be loading clean flight. So I'm going to try to download clean flight and I'm on FPV Lab right here on the forums and this is talking about the official clean flight software so there's the firmware source and the GUI source now that's just like the code that you use to build it and then there's the firmware download because there's different firmwares for different controllers and then there's the actual GUI download which is the one we want so let's go ahead and get the uh, GUI download going We'll go there. Now this is actually going to the uh, Google Chrome App Store, I believe. And then it just says Add to Chrome right here. So I'm going to hit Add to Chrome. And Add App. Okay, now that we have the, uh, the app downloaded and it's installed into Chrome, we can go ahead and run it. Now, one of the things that I notice about this is it's not a standalone application that runs directly out of Windows. It's actually running from Chrome as an application. Now, this has good things about it and bad things about it. One of the bad things is you have to have Chrome, so you have to run it out of a browser. Uh, but that in token has a good thing about it. That means if you have Chrome on a mobile device, then you can also run clean flight on a mobile device like a tablet or something so that's a good thing about it. it's very portable uh, but it took me a while to get used to this fact that it wasn't a standalone app and the way you access it is you come up here in the upper left hand corner and click on 
the apps right here and it gets you to this window that you're looking at right now so if you don't see this like if you're somewhere else uh, maybe I'm out on YouTube somewhere or something like that and I want to get back to running the apps I just click on this app button and it brings up the apps that I have installed now I have both base flight and clean flight installed but I'm going to be using uh, clean flight so just click and clean flight comes up and then you can go ahead and connect make sure it's on com6 remember we saw com6 in the device manager and this is the speed uh, 115200 just hit the connect button and now that it's up you can see that when I move the B rotor the picture of the quad also moves and if I go sideways so it's just following what I do with the B rotor so we know it's working now the first thing we'll probably do is reinstall the firmware we probably update the firmware on the B rotor to make sure it's up to date uh, so we may be doing that in the next video but eventually we're going to go in here and to configuration and change this right here to an airplane since I'm going to be using it as an airplane and then you can save and reboot now it automatically reboots you can see it says rebooting up here and then it says ready so if we go back to the setup now it's got this picture instead and you can see, oops, let me get this in the camera. So you can see that the uh, top corresponds to the top. And that little arrow here on the B rotor is pointing towards the front, which is over here. You can see it says front. And you can see the back bottom. So it's very clear how it's configured. And if anything's wrong, you can change that in clean flight. So uh, that's it for now. I just want to introduce you to clean flight to the app show you how it works out of chrome and of course show you the b rotor so if you're interested in the b rotor and uh, using it as an airplane you can look at the next few videos i'll be making i'm going to configure this for a plane and i hope to have the osd working at the end to display all of the telemetry information like the battery and uh, altitude artificial horizon that sort of thing that I can see on the plane so thank you for watching and we'll see you next time Take your